Every year we lose about 20, 30 species that are gone forever. And using this technology, I think that we can preserve and save those species that have been lost. Scientists at the University of Georgia are attempting to use DNA from endangered cats to save them from extinction. What we're trying to do here is collect skin cells from endangered species and actually turn them into sperm or eggs. The goal is to develop a tiger embryo and artificially inseminate a house cat, which will then give birth to a baby tiger. Because of the extensive knowledge of domestic cats' reproductive systems, the risk of failure is significantly lower than if using a tiger as a surrogate. We know that we're going to have a lot of hurdles, and so what we want to do is start off with an animal we know very well. And so we thought cats was a good starting point. The three-part process of creating an artificial embryo begins with collecting skin cell samples from endangered species. We got these samples from Zoo Atlanta. They collected the biopsies from their Sumatran tiger and their clouded leopard. Those skin cells are then turned into stem cells, which will later be reprogrammed into sperm and eggs, allowing for the creation of an embryo. Once we have these sperm and eggs, we'll combine them together, we'll get a developing embryo, and then the idea is we're gonna transfer them into a domestic cat. And hopefully in a few months, we'll have a number of kittens from that individual. One of the greatest challenges that the team has faced has been developing the technique to transform skin cells into stem cells, a necessary task that they have yet to accomplish. We are still waiting to make that leap from skin cell to stem cell. And I think we're finally on the doorstep. We're, we're ready to go. By collecting and freezing skin cell samples from various animals, scientists are effectively providing a road to bring back species that may become extinct in the future. In a single tank, you could have a biobank of two, three hundred different species and enough individuals in each box where you could use this technology to repopulate lost species. I'll never give up essentially, you know, as long as I can keep doing great science and exciting things. I just really think endangered species are important to conserve and they're worth the effort. This fuzzy little creature is a quokka, and these guys live here, off the west coast of Australia, on Rottnest Island. Quokkas are not only cute, they are camera ready, and they're taking the internet by storm. So, let's start at the beginning. What is a quokka? A quokka is a small wallaby. Uh, it comes from the same family as a kangaroo. And physically, they've got thick brown fur, they've uh, got long tails, and they hop around. Quokkas thrive on Rottnest Island because they don't have any predators over here, so there's no foxes. We have the largest viable population of about 10,000. Oh, sorry, and you are? My name's Cassiana Gray, and I'm a conservation officer on Rottnest Island. In my role, I'm responsible for managing conservation programs. And there's one online trend that has really helped these animals. A quokka selfie. But make sure you're getting it right. How to take a quokka selfie. Step one, a camera. Step two, a quokka. But don't touch the quokkas. Ah, uh, no. Or feed them, it's a $150 fine. These guys don't need the food. They naturally graze their way through the island's vegetation. And they also really love the seedlings that we plant as part of our revegetation projects that we have implemented by our environment technicians. Sorry about that, guys. Thanks for all your hard work. And what makes these guys so great for taking selfies? Around the settlement area, the quokkas are a lot friendlier. They've become used to people, so their natural behaviours change. But out in the reserve, where they're actually still exhibiting their natural behaviour, they will be a lot more wary of people. We have to know, are they actually smiling in photos? Yeah, they're not actually smiling in the photos, it's just the natural shape of their mouth which comes up at the side, which uh, makes them look like they're smiling. The popularity of the quokka selfie uh, has given us the opportunity to be able to raise awareness about the quokkas, particularly on the mainland, that are under threat. Uh, so we use that as a, a platform to educate the public and also educate them about appropriate interaction with wildlife. So finally, a good cause for selfies.
Early morning in Kenya, in the wildlife conservation areas, they are quiet. This all changes when the phone rings. Traffickers are here. The team can be contacted at all times. We are the first mobile security patrol veterinary team in this part of Kenya. Typically, an animal is trapped in a poach snare, but it can be anything. A lion which needs to be translocated, or a sick zebra, but usually it's a snare issue. Our kits include gloves, first aid kit, medical supplies, blindfold, rope, and guarding rifle. The team consists of a driver, one head vet, and two rangers. Once we have assembled everything, we are ready to go and save the animal. The, the roads are not usually paved. Most of the time we drive through the bush. We are going to see where is this, where is this, where is this. Reach the animal, you have to keep the animal safe and ourselves safe. It has become debilitated because of the snare, it's not eating. We only have a few minutes once the animal has been tranquilized, and it can be very dramatic. Take care. Complete. Back in the compound, we are a bigger team. Joseph, our animal keeper, takes care of the orphans. Our lab technician takes care of the blood work. A co owner manages our online presence. This job is important because there is a lot of conflict between human beings and wildlife. And therefore, intervention to save wildlife from becoming extinct is very crucial. I love so much to save lives and see animals are well. And that is our calling. That's why I do the job. These are sea turtle eggs. And there are two ways this situation can play out. There's either or there's So how can we make sure this doesn't end up like this? Well, take a look again. These aren't your ordinary sea turtle eggs. These eggs could one day take down an entire poaching network. The story of these eggs starts in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Hi, I'm Kim williams Guillen, and I am a conservation ecologist. Kim does research on a wide variety of animals, but we're here to talk about endangered and threatened sea turtles. With sea turtles in Central America, there's an issue of poaching of the nests for consumption of the eggs. And so, her team has developed a unique solution to gather more information about the poaching trade. Fake eggs with GPS trackers. We can hide these fake turtle eggs in sea turtle nests. Our hope is that these eggs will get poached along with the others and transmit information on their locations. Where is it that they go after they're taken from the beach? But for this to work, the fake eggs have to be convincing. They have to have the right feel because sea turtle eggs are kind of a little soft and squishy. They're not like chicken eggs. We've been using a 3D printer and a kind of flexible plastic, but they still don't look quite right. And this is when our story moves to Los Angeles. Hello, I'm Lauren. And Lauren works in Hollywood. My day-to-day -day job is I work on set as a makeup artist, which could be beauty makeup, prosthetics, creature design, wigs, blood. So it made sense for Lauren to help Kim make fake eggs. We needed these eggs to look realistic, to feel realistic. And so that's kind of where I've come in. It was like the best way that I could use my skills making prosthetics, but to actually like help a whole species of turtles, it's like, it's a dream job. After months of revisions, it's time to put these eggs to the test in Costa Rica. Hi again. You remember Kim. She's here to deploy the eggs herself on a protected conservation area. This is a place that's very special because it's a very important nesting site. Tonight, a sea turtle will come and I can test out 
putting the false sea turtle eggs in the nest. Not only will this project provide Kim's team with valuable information on poaching, she and Lauren hope it will inspire others as well. Wildlife poaching can be abstract or too depressing to even think about. Something about this project kind of captures people's attention. Here's this very simple, unique solution that I think then serves as a jumping off point for people's imaginations to learn more about this trade. All of us working on this project are just doing it in our, our weird little nooks and wherever we can. And it just goes to show there's so many little ways that everyone can help. You don't have to be making fake turtle eggs to make a difference. You can make a difference in your own way.